Hey everyone, so this is our new assignment. This is the movie poster redesign. So you're going to be taking a, uh, you're going to choose a horror movie that you enjoy. Uh, it, I always say horror movie just because the um, iconography and imagery from horror movies usually lends itself to more sort of um, exciting action-packed drawing styles. Um, I'm not dead set on that. If you just hate horror movies or something else you would rather choose, we can talk about that. Um, but I would, you know, suggest it. Um, it's a good place to start. Research the movie itself, the marketing imagery, the original posters, etc. Then, using Photoshop, draw a brand new design using recognizable scenes and or ideas from the movie. The imagery, theme, and overall feeling of the poster is up to you. You can create a digital collage as a foundation for your drawing or work from your head. Uh, I'll talk more about the, the digital collage later on. You are not allowed to redraw the original poster art. So, you know, go research what they did for the, the posters, uh, original posters, but um, the goal here is not to redraw somebody else's work. Uh, you're also not allowed to use other people's art and design in the creation of your image. And this goes for everything we'll create and, and should apply to anything you create in the future. You, you want to um, take inspiration from things, but not just recreate others' work. Not too many rules with this. Uh, there is a size rule. So the um, normal movie, movie poster size is uh, uh, two, two to three proportion. So that means for every two inches um, on the the width of it, there are three inches on the height. Um, and I say here it should be at least 12 by 18, could be larger, um, but it needs to stay in that same two to three proportion. So it's at least 12 by 18 at 300 DPI uh, or any size, any size larger that keeps the two to three proportions. Uh, 12 to 18 is pretty large, and so that'll be a pretty large file size. So we'll need to make sure that you have um, your thumb drive instead of uh, relying on cloud stuff or, or emailing or anything like that. Your color palette should be relatively minimal, somewhere along the lines of monochromatic with one or two accent colors. Uh, this uh, Friday the 13th is a really good example of, of what I'm talking about when I say monochromatic with one or two accent colors. The, the monochromatic refers to, in this image, uh, all of the blues. So almost everything in this drawing is made with blue tones, right? With the exception, of course, black. Uh, and and if you if you take your drawing and kind of simplify it down uh, to uh, less colors than the entire rainbow, then it becomes slightly easier to draw. You can kind of forget. You can take a little bit out of um, trying to do things photorealistically, uh, and, and you can just kind of minimalize. Um, and focus on just your drawing and a few a few colors. So you can see here there's, uh, I don't know, three or four, maybe five different shades of blue, and then these accent colors that are tossed in. Obviously red is a big one, and then the pink, that's uh, kind of like pink and purple uh, you see in the background. Those two are called accent colors, uh, and the reason they're called accents is because they're used very sparingly in the image. They're used to uh, sort of draw your eye around the page into different different areas. They're used to separate things spatially, i.e. the foreground from the background, uh, and they're used to create really stark contrast. So think about that as you're working. There's some other um, good examples. You know, this has the, the red is sort of an accent color. It's used <clears throat> to differentiate between characters here and to create sort of this uh, really stark red lighting highlights on, on the different characters. A little bit more painterly um, poster, but still a really, really good one. Obviously much more complex than, than these others. And there are a few of these that, that are painterly, but you can recreate this all in Photoshop. Um, most of these are probably created in Photoshop, I would imagine, maybe some of them in Illustrator, but uh, the painterly ones are more than likely going to be in Photoshop. Uh, and, and these are just, you know, overlapping um, nice brush strokes, uh, nice brushes with, um, with uh, pin pressure, um, and... Uh, and getting a real, a real solid grasp on that. 
And then of course the, the last rule over here is your final poster should include title, subtitle, stars, etc. So um, when you're looking at these, you know, one of these that one of the things that really makes these posters look legit is in fact the title. Right? So the title uh, here, here presented 20, uh, 20th Century Fox Presents, uh, and then all these, the, the credits down here. Now, I don't want you guys taking a ton of time to, you know, spend on putting all the text in. I want you to focus uh, most of your time on the drawing. But these small elements um, really turn uh, a nice drawing into something that looks just super, super professional. See some, some classic examples. Um, generally what I recommend with this assignment is to think kind of along the lines of, of what you did with the garbage pail kit drawing but a, a little bit more detailed well a significant amount more detailed and uh, just a more complex version of that uh, if you want to consider um, a good way to start is to sketch up your idea in either uh, I'll, I'll be showing some of this stuff in class um, and maybe in another video uh, creating a digital collage in Photoshop meaning going and finding a bunch of imagery bringing it into Photoshop assembling it in some sort of nice compositional way and then um, and then recreating the drawing on top of that right so essentially you're you're bringing in a, a photo of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator and then you're you're you know creating let's say you bring in the character other characters from the film and, and say a scene from the movie uh, and then you bring in your your Terminator and you layer all those over top of each other get them looking pretty decent and then you redraw the whole thing in your style right with your color scheme and, and all that kind of stuff um, that's a good way to go about things you can do things totally from scratch uh, but if you end up you know going the route of finding uh, some some imagery uh, from the movie uh, it may it may help you a little bit now when you're when you are finding imagery I like I said earlier don't find for instance don't go get this image right this is someone's art this is someone's drawing that they've made so don't go find a drawing or a painting um, take a still from the movie or uh, uh, something similar um, but make sure that it is not someone's actual drawing, painting, digital, digital art, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, so like I said, I'll be talking more about uh, about digital collage, about the um, the uh, the pen and um, and pressure stuff. I still want to talk about that. So I'll be doing another video on that pretty soon, as soon as I can get the tablet working on my home computer. So uh, yeah, get started on this and uh, we'll talk soon.